all the units operating here in the Arctic region, they need to be very, very robust to cope with this uh, harsh environment. This is just prevent any aid from the outside. You need to bring everything yourself. The Arctic region is the gateway to the North Atlantic. For NATO and its allies, maintaining a strong presence here is vital to protect trade, transport and communication links between North America and Europe. Historically, this has been an area of low tension, but that is changing. Climate change is causing the world's ice caps to melt at an alarming rate. As this ancient landscape forever changes, what does the future hold for security of the region known as the High North? I'll be joining the Danish armed forces in Greenland, at sea and in the air to find out the challenges of patrolling this vast area. Greenland is considered by scientists to be ground zero for climate change, where its melting ice caps are significantly contributing to a rise in sea levels. Along with the Faroe Islands, it forms part of the Kingdom of Denmark and is therefore under Danish military protection, which falls to the Joint Arctic Command, or JACO, a Danish-led operational command with a headquarters in Nook, Greenland's capital. The Geogap Greenland, Iceland and UK is, is uh, hugely important for NATO. Uh, uh, it's what uh, ties the, the transatlantic uh, bonds together. That's uh, the way we, uh, we would get the reinforcement from, the, from North America in a conflict scenario in Europe. No one knows how to operate in the freezing waters off the coast of Greenland better than the Royal Danish Navy, who have been patrolling here for centuries. We'll be boarding the HGMS Triton, one of four Danish ocean frigates patrolling Greenland at any given time under the Joint Arctic Command. Right now we are coming alongside the HGMS Triton here and they're going to winch us up onto the ship. Thanks. Safely onto the ship, I went up to the bridge to meet the commanding officer. Commander Senior Grade Peter Crow is a veteran of these waters and a former commander of one of NATO's naval task forces. Can you give us some idea of just the vastness of this area? It's, it's extreme distances, so you need to think ahead about uh, the ship's performance, about the crew skills and about logistics. We start to feel a growing interest from other navies that uh, also wish to explore the northern region. And of course, we want to keep the sovereignty and protect the interests of Denmark and uh, also our allies up here. Therefore, we are very pleased to share our knowledge with uh, others and especially allied navies. So you say that you're surveying this area, mapping this area. Has that mapping or surveillance changed due to climate change over the last few years, do you think? I mean, it's the sea level that's changing and it's the amount of ice that is changing. Let's take an example here in the Bay of Disco where we are now. People uh, on the shore side, they used to visit the island Disco uh, and they could go there by uh, food. But they haven't been able to do that for a very long time because the temperature is increasing. So it is very, very uh, easy to see the, the changes in the, in the, of the climate. The Triton is uniquely adapted to these waters. While not technically an icebreaker, it has a reinforced hull, meaning it can break through ice up to 80 centimetres thick. It is also highly manoeuvrable, which is key when operating in Greenland's narrow ports and waterways. With a crew of roughly 55 highly trained personnel and equipped with advanced radar systems and a Sea Hawk helicopter, the Triton's main role is to protect Danish sovereignty. But it is also responsible for search and rescue missions, environmental monitoring and logistical support to local communities. In these vast regions and testing conditions, a successful patrol relies on the competence and teamwork of the crew members. 
Left one. Yeah, that's right. I got it right. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. On board the Triton, a group of 20 or so conscripts are quite literally learning the ropes. For the Danes, passing on knowledge from one seafaring generation to the next maintains mission continuity. So this is the ice spice, is that right? Yeah. And how is my ice spice? It's perfect. Thank you very <laughs> yeah. much. It's really, uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, and it's the first time you've done it. To be fair, I didn't do most of it, really. <laughs> yeah. uh, I saw I you got lot. some help, yeah. I did have a lot of help. Um, yeah. So you're in such a small, limited space for such a long period of time. Mm. But does everybody get on? Is there a big camaraderie? How does it work? But usually it's like a big family. It's like working with your family. So, because when we're off from work, we're still here. We, it's like 24 hours a day. <laughs> Never ends. Is this your first time to Greenland or have you done? No, time? I've done it uh, multiple times. We learn to have a lot of respect uh, because the North Atlantic Ocean is one of the harshest uh, oceans in the world. We really do have uh, respect for the waters up here. Spending time on the Triton had given me a window into the rigours and perils of operating in these waters. The crew on board are acutely aware of their roles and there's an almost instinctual understanding of the tasks that need to be done. Those skills and experiences could be crucial if, as expected, climate change causes this region to become more contested. As the ice melts, it creates the opportunity for new shipping routes and with it, potential risks and threats to Euro-Atlantic security. The availability of new Arctic routes while presenting potential commercial opportunities could also lead to competition between nations and jeopardise the security of the entire region. With Russia stating its intention to be a primary force in the Arctic region and China declaring itself as a near-Arctic power, Arctic security has become a priority for the NATO alliance and its allies. Our area of responsibility will be more used by, by the whole world, trade, ships, uh, by uh, research, by uh, tourism. So, so there will be more people in our area and that of course uh, uh, gives us a challenge both in the surveillance part but also in the search and rescue part. Uh, we need to be uh, capable to handle that. So there will be challenges. Greenland is the world's largest island, six times the size of Germany. It has a coastline of 44,000 kilometres, longer than the distance around the world's equator. With a population of just 56,000, Greenland's communities are often thousands of kilometres apart. To patrol an area this big, both for surveillance and search and rescue missions, the Joint Arctic Command also deploys Challenger aircraft. The Challenger patrols the regions around Greenland and the Faroe Islands on a daily basis, and today I'll be joining them. But first, a flight briefing. We're here, thunderstorm, going out through the fjords, up along the coastline, inspecting for the ships. Uh, in around uh, counterclockwise around uh, Disco uh, Island, and when we're done with the inspection, we go back home. So when you say we're inspecting for ships, what are, what are we? What are you looking for exactly? Uh, we have a general idea of what's uh, out there today and uh, we're just going out and uh, see if everything is like it should be. And uh, the, the ships there, the fishing ships, uh, see uh, if they have the uh, permissions to be there and uh, just making sure that they are that they are what they are and uh, where they are and do what they were supposed be. to do. Yeah. So essentially you're creating a kind of maritime picture from yeah. the sky. Briefing complete, it was time to board the aircraft. The CL604 Challenger has long range and high altitude capabilities, which makes it ideal for Arctic maritime patrol and search and rescue missions. So guys, right now we are obviously flying over Greenland. Can you give me a little bit of an idea about what you're doing? Right at the moment, I'm using the radar to look for uh, targets on the, on the surface and try to correlate them with uh, what info we have on the, the ships that are in the area. And then we need to go uh, visually ID each ship, all the fishing ships, the passenger vessels, the merchant ships. We have to uh, have a positive visual ID of them. We take some, some frame grabs of it and they're sent down to the Arctic Command. So everybody's sure that the ships are who they say they are and that they're allowed to be there. the 
ice caps melt, regions like this one could become more accessible to a larger number of ships. And if that happens, then the role of aircraft like this one and the surveillance that they do becomes ever more important. The truth is that nobody knows exactly what will happen in the coming years and decades with regards to rising sea levels and the effects they could have on security in the high north. But what we do know is that Greenland's ice caps are diminishing and sea levels are rising year on year. In an age when global security is both unpredictable and volatile, it is vital NATO maintains a strong allied presence in a strategically important region.